is Void, they don't really have much to deal with him. Oh, he can geez. go put and then he doesn't really care about yeah. any of their damage. MVP's team fire on is super oh, scary. Oh, oh all, all dirty power. comes out. Going in deep into the Radiant jungle. He drops a sentry ward. It will be out of range of yes. Radiant. Oh, but the arrow will connect from Feb. He's got stun out. and wave of terror of Arbol as well. So there's your stun. He's looking for a mirror image. He was actually hoping to dodge the magic missiles, but unable, unable to do so. This will help Febby, and yep, he'll take the first, first blood. blood. It a crucial mistake just because they aren't super comfortable with the playstyle. In the last game, they are they know how to fight as five all the time, all game long. Top lane for Rev. All right, they're trying to bait out his time walk so they can lock him in and fly just starts with a nuke. Hits the fortune's end, but faces boys already away. A couple of stick charges up his sleeve as well. Down crit and snare for Rev. Doesn't actually have time walk away with the range damage of no tell. They're gonna reach him one second. Wasn't even that, it was like a fraction of a second. Very nice. Gonna find the time to gank up mid. What they may not realize is the Alchemist is in the neighborhood. And crit, well, there's your ensnare. Moving to MP, Boo Boo. Arrow flies forward, missed actually everything, but Miracle's already so low. Defensive imprisonment will allow him to survive a little bit longer. MP locked in, out of corner! And his three heroes forever will come back out, but he got more of his teammates than he did the enemy. He still may have enough damage with Alchemist 2 all arriving. There'll be a three for three trade off. Move will come in too, lassoing back the chemically raged. Up Alchemist, he won't really achieve that much with this. Maybe a couple of sticky napalm stacks, but that's all. And for Rev, what? He can get on bottom lane. Dubu should have seen that ward going down from crit. MP, a little bit too far out in the middle lane. We'll need a little bit of help. Wave of Terror won't be enough. You need a swap to stun on Moon, keeping him back, but not back far enough. Damage from Flush going. MVP, they're bringing in support. They need a defensive tower. This is... Oh, they need to keep Femi alive. Moon can just go straight for the last two. The nukes are easily there. With Miracle with the extra orb damage. Finally kills Noji. Very happy to use it. They're coming over. OD is the, is the most obvious target. Leap forward. No! Forever! Well, the arrows have been off. The first Chrono caught three teammates. And now Ella. that one... Well, it catches the air. Gale from MP, he does find no tell and a little bit too deep with the Moonlight Shadow already up. Maybe they can salvage this situation. MVP looking for the time lock with the magic missile. That'll help for Rev to get the last hit before Febby. Nice life there, crit. Life is bringing him back up at the moment. Takes five players from OG, so it's just under 12 minutes. They're able to claim Roshan. Putting the Aegis Immortal into the hands of the OD. And the ping's coming out for MP. Yeah, he knows he's too far out. But he needed some kind Dyer's of a space to try and complete up this veil, which looks to be his, his first item from a purchase. I wonder how early you pull him to ag this game. You certainly want him to be relevant, and without an ag, I, I don't think he's going to be useful at all, especially with the Oracle in the back lane. Uh, with the Fates Edict going to be able to nullify most of his damage. Fight, however. Even if he wants to chemical rage and jump down to that bottom lane, Oh, okay, they are. They're going to be forced into it. The swap, the stun, not the perfect timing. There's actually the gas in here, but the chrono is perfect. Miracle of Moon caught for crit. Stops the fun. The arrow will fly through, but it's still not enough. Fly brings him out. Ball from is on Miracle. And wait for the Eclipse to connect. It won't actually do anything. They don't even need it. The damage is just too much. Even back behind the tier 2 tower, they're willing to find concoction prepared by QO. Flies forward, only hits on no tail. Nortel's still got that saving grace of Sunder up his sleeve. So MVP not finding that sweet spot, that nice initiation. And the ace is the uh, Naga Siren support, just in the perfect position to stop that. And then nice place to fly to, saving up his towers. They don't want QO here at this fight. Like, they want him to be, like, off. off somewhere, like, farming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Their net worth is, like, very even at this point. Alchemist needs to be. Alchemist team rather needs to be like four or five thousand gold ahead, but he has to be the one. Learn Lasso, he catches Forev. Now Forev does get swapped out. He's got to leap into a chronosphere now, in fact. And he'll find three heroes. Nurtel combining with a concoction and wave of terror, but fly. He still kept the life going into Nurtel's three generation duration was too much. They do find the kill over on Miracle, but thanks to Aegis Immortal, it comes straight back up. QO mopping up the pieces of the initiation of OG. And OG, in fact, okay. Maybe not the greatest time. Miracle. Can play there. The Naga's position might be compromised. Oh, the Firefly? The reward. Here they go. Yeah, the Observer Ward's up. Now Dubu's gonna actually break the smoke. Perev jumps in. Chrono Spear didn't want to trigger a straight away. Now Isolate Miracle. Dubu's still alive. Caught in the edge of the Chrono, which means he will die in the middle of that time vortex. That Naga, also low on life. QO was looking for the opening. And MVP, they're split to three different ways. As MPU's on the run, but thanks to Moonlight Shadow, they'll get to go in Viz. The dust is on him.
And now that will actually dissipate, but so does the Moonlight Shadow. They've got stuns, they've got ways to fight him. So the Venomancer accepts his fate, triggers the ultimate, at least keeps OG low. They didn't even need the Nagasaren ultimate from that fight. MP, or sorry, for F, stalled the Nagasaren, but she was not really close to anyone and decided to go for a solo ult on Miracle. And Kuhn's like, the low. Okay, mana is still there for Febby. But he's waiting for a good time to initiate. Tom comes in close, means if Febby wants to blink him, like actually leave himself away, Mook can blink along with him with a drum charge too. Febby, he, he knows it too. So there's your, your leap away. Oh, he started his TP and cancelled it. Maybe accepting his fate. Flame Break would have stopped it anyway. You also TP'd the wrong creep. He, he could have TP'd the Steve creep and maybe oh, help him out. Oh, he tries to stick around for the last hit in the tower. The catapult will do it. He'll time walk into the river. But the problem is he can't get out of there. Lost too much mana. Dubu will swap him up. And that'll be the saving grace. In the meantime, OG just enjoying. He's actually got 44 stolen intelligence at the moment. So he hits like a truck. Make it 52 and crit with the Song of the Siren. They gather around QO. And ceremoniously, they will execute this alchemist. Even with the chemical rage, they flame break him back. QO does not have the life to survive this. And that's a double kill for Miracle. No Chronosphere available. No alchemist unless he wants to buy back. And they're going to rotate to the top lane. Creeps uh, support Miranas. The ability to get a very early Aghanim Scepter. This one's probably a little later than what we've seen. 20 but, minutes is really good. 20 minutes is still good. Oh, just that MVP game we, uh, we cast on the first day of group stages. Oh, hello, goodbye, Venno. Uh, it, we, what we saw, a 12 minute and eight, uh, sorry, a 13 minute and 18 minute Aghanim Scepter. For outliers, Toby. <laughs> they, were, <laughs> they were crazy, crazy, crazy times. Rev? Oh. Potential leap forward into a bat ride now. OG smoke at a probably better time for them. And Flores already sitting inside the pit though. Air flies forward, doesn't hit any heroes. Oh no again! Forever enough to walk Chrono. He'll have to get himself away. The imprisoned over the Alchemist. Now lassoing back QO. The chemical rage again not being enough to deal with his OG damage. The vengeful spirit was attempting a save. Boy, next game. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they just hope the Darkseid doesn't get banned out within the first two, like Hoji did to them in this game. No easy setups. Very difficult to hit that Hoji's line back all the time. It creates more time for MVP to build up some kind of net worth or opportunity against OG. Blink last two, they found Dubu, and well, he'll hope for a swap target with a Sun on Miracle. He's actually got one. The Moonlight Shadow also protecting him, but no, the Batrider Flame Break. Team timeout was going to be enough, but this time for Rev. Easy to Chronos will hold the game. Quick Terror Blade, as well as um, as well as the O. Oh, I say the OD to attack background. <laughs> He's terrible at that. Uh, we'll come back in. What, what a surprise! Miracle is dead. Back inside the game as we have resumed. I think it'll keep him alive. <laughs> Just let him stand there and let OG hold him. Down now with the Scotty completed, Aegis the Immortal. Looks like time for a push, he's still got Metamorphosis up his sleeve. Baby's trying to push him in the mid lane. The bottom lane's been pushed in by QO, so the other lane's looking good for MVP. But the top lane is the primary one, and actually OG, yep, they will continue. They're bringing all five in, now the Metamorphosis to go. Fortification up for MVP, for Rev, start the time dilation on the Terra Blade. I slow him down, Concoction prepares his wall for QO. They're just trying to get rid of these illusions. Forever with the Moonlight Shadow, also hoping for an opening. Bevy blinks in for the double star fall. No time, takes a lot of damage early, and now Forev, it's a triple turn on the back line. The Song of the Siren will help reset this fight, however. They'll group up, and then they just bail out. Vengeful Spirit swapping him, nice only from crit. MP, maybe, has he got enough time with the last two? They drag Dubu back, but crit, he's almost gonna die. In fact, he's so low on life, he will tick out to the Venomancer. And Aegis the Immortal will bring no, but no tail back to life. The defense is real from MVP, and this OG gained the first taste of MVP's fight. They may not have actually stopped it yet. Nurtel getting caught out by the concoction, couldn't dodge it with the mana style. And that's gonna be the Terror Blade dying twice over an MVP. Not only do they hold their top lane, they keep their tower. Today is a very, very shortly numbered. They're gonna be set down to the same in the towers as MVP. Well, looking to fight now, there's still 20 seconds left on Chronosphere, OG. They're under the Obsidian Sentry, however, they'll get rid of it quickly. They also don't have Aegis this time. Oh, the TP is coming forward. Bringing no talent to the fight, no Aegis, no Metamorphosis. On cooldown for 16 seconds, Moonlight Shadow. Gonna allow MVP to come in closer. The Observer Ward, however, from OG very clearly saw this happen. 
They still want to fight around at least the extra armor that this tier 2 tower provides. It's scanning to see if MVP are moving forward, which is not the case. MVP could win the game with this fight, though. That's one of the fights is very crucial for them. I'll see if OG are at their weakest. OG just needed the initiation, however, and then maybe they can hold this fight. Kuro's already triggered his chemical rage. And OD, oh, okay, caught inside the chronosphere. Song of the Siren comes out from crit. They're trying to keep Miracle alive, but the Starfall is slowly killing him off. He has the Hurricane Punch himself away. Perez wants to retreat until the time will bring him out. OD, nice ulti. Miracle can stand his ground and try and fight this one. Same with No Tail. He's actually got Thunder of Marvel. Needs a hero to trigger this. Oh, he's got an over on Perez, who time walks away the damage. Now No Tail can go big. Song down Dubu. They move the QO. The last Dubu move will hold him there. OD, this is going to be the fight for them. Three here. They're gonna bring them all down. They need another one for him to time walk away. The dire observer ward sees Febby down inside the river. He's just stopped. And now he'll blink up, looking for the kill. He almost found it on the Oracle, but the OG vision let them prepare for it. As Febby's on the run, but the Eclipse drops from Miracle. Four heroes lost for MV. They probably, well, maybe with the illusions they can complete this. They're trying to gale Shivas. That tier three tower can be denied. And OG maybe looking back to take down the recently respawned Roshan. This I am very worried for forever. It doesn't really seem to be a fun game for him Radiance at Curia all. That's Radiant's Courier. That's a big one. They try Moji. Lock committed early on. Same smoke for the most important times. Oh, Venomancer already using Gale as well as Veil. Needs to get him out, and Moon, oh, he jumps forward. But there's no gem of true sight on this Batrider, so he doesn't see the retreating heroes. That gem is back timely. over on crit. Yeah, he's had some really good Moonlight Shadows, too. Like, Venomets are, are, would have been dead on that bottom fight. They did not have Moonlight Shadow under him. Smart. Still up for OD. I think Miracle wants to go for a play. Jump forward. Here's an Hex. MP. Five hits from Miracle. And you'll find a solo kill on MP. Through the false promise. A nice on a no tell. Even the Gale on a Miracle. He'll be four stars forward. Looking for that hit on the Duber. Four stars away. The extra stuff. Perez into the fight. QO now needs to go big. No tell. Sunders away all of the life. QO so low. Miracle. The double eclipse. MP needs to push him back with concoction. As well as the Nova connecting on Miracle. is still not enough damage to bring down this OD, so he four stars forward, looking for the hit on the MP, but he just can't reach him in time. Fight from Miracle. He just went in there. No false promise, no problem. And a uh, nice uh, self astral there to buy a game for the face of Void. Starting with the initial Chronospheres, Alchemist, okay. Arrow's gonna fly in, looking for a good target. Five seconds on over on the OD. Concoction as well. Debbie jumping in, nice damage with the Starfall, but now Moon's gonna make him pay the price. Drag back in, a miracle with yet. They split the lanes. Remember, MVP still have the small advantage with the momentum that was on the top lane. Heroes gonna try and bump that in a little bit further. And leap is available Radiance for him. He'll leap to start tower. with Blink Dagger attack. further and four stop. Then the TP, the flame break. Oh. It reaches him up in the corner. Moon read it perfectly. Bevy's arrow will go astray, and he understands there is no way to fight this. Moon even dancing a circle around him. The fourth fly will kill Secure with a purifying flame. Miracle now a Miracle. Yep, forever, however. Miracle doesn't carry by himself. The not enough life. Thought with a swap out. Miracle still got cheese and marble. He'll take down two. Follow up with the imprisonment into a third. Asma's trying to help out, but now Moon has arrived. Flame break Miracle. The load is over. Then the cheese into the exit. A triple kill for Miracle. This man, only 19 years old. But he is well over 9k at this point. Whole QO in position. Where's the attack? Miracle, wait for it. He needs more damage, but he doesn't have it. He can't attack the BKP target. <laughs> MVP thought they were setting up a trap for Miracle. <laughs> There's no fast fingers on the side. Exactly what we expect him. You are too far out. Gonna get stunned, gonna get control. No cells on top of him. Terrible will find the kill. The buyback's really not there for MVP. Only face of Void has it. By the time the Venom Answer is back up, OG may have taken one lane of rank, if not two. Push is just so strong. Alchemist, Pecoction, Aspray. Everything you've got, try and slow down OG's attack. The upside is Miracle is still terrible at bringing down Raxus. The upside of a miracle is, however, he's really great at killing off here, especially when Kuro comes this far forward. He took a 48 stolen points of intel. The swap back for Rev. Oh, who's dying from this? But he's already found the Terra Blade kill on BS. 
And this will be a second lane of Ragged in favor of OG. MVP rallying the defenses. They spam as much as they can. The lead board, the concoct is done. No tell. Now three man chrono. Nice of Rev. But the song of the siren's gone. The only thing was for OG is the Aegis of the Immortal. There's four players grouped up. No tell wants to fight. Make more copies. Make more kills. QO surrounded by OG. And this really is OG's home. It used to belong to MVP. But they can just stand their ground as long as they want to with no tier two towers up. OG can just keep bringing down racks after racks. And MVP are always playing with one man down at least. I will hope for them this game. I wonder what they'll do for game three. Will there be another Alk or Heavy Farmer or, or game number one style? I think they have a lot more, uh, a lot more fight with the early style. They just made, like, they didn't stack that well for the Alchemist. Like, a lot of missed spells. When you only have, like, one big team fighting ultimate, like the face of Void, you have to hit those uh, when it matters the most. It's a great individual play from OG. I think great in particular, like, not getting caught in the chrono was huge. That Naga Siren really did just help OG reset everything, but MVP, they're not done yet. They fight to the end. This is the MVP way. For Rev, however, well, the swap back can be there with the Summon of Miracles. So for Rev, can time walk off a little bit of damage, but Uga sacrificing himself. QR trying to find the front line. Crit comes in. There's your last two from Moon. They hold the big man in place and they get the GG. OG will force this best of three into a decider. After MVP and OG, they went hammer and bombs. This game, it seemed a lot more cool, calm, and collected from both sides. MVP slowing down the pace. Is that actually something they really wanted to do against OG? Like, I know they had the Alchemist, and never, like, all the panel were going for that, but... They just didn't seem that comfortable. I think MP in particular on the Venomancer, like he played a phenomenal phase of in game number one. And then this game, he was three and nine. He died way too much. He gave, gave a lot up in the mid lane, constantly get, uh, get cutting out, but it just was not the smoothest game. Right? Yeah.